back here on BTN Live. The Nebraska Cornhusker defense has really improved the last couple of games. The numbers show it, especially at the bottom. 27 points a game the first four games of the season, down to 12 the last two. So let's bring in an expert now. Matt Davison is a professional heartbreaker and the radio voice of the Huskers. He joins us on the phone. Matt, the last few games, Nebraska's given up 20 points, then 19, then just seven. What's different about this defense? Hey, Mike, thanks for having me. You know, I think we all kind of expected that this might be the case with Nebraska's defense this year. Coming into the season, a lot of young players, especially in the front seven, and I think everybody understood it was going to take some time for Bo Pelini and John Papuchas to get this defense figured out. And even though the, the competition hasn't been what it's going to be when we get to November, I think it's, it's obvious that the guys have been in the right place more of the time than they were in September. They seem to be filling the, the run fits a lot better, uh, not getting beat in coverage down the field as much. And so I think you've seen this defense grow up the last few weekends, and I think they've gained confidence in the wins. So let's turn our attention to the offense now. Taylor has been hurt. Armstrong has been starting. Kellogg has been playing better. Where are we right now on the Nebraska QB situation? Well, as of today, you know, you still have to say Tommy Armstrong is, is the guy. Now, if Taylor Martinez gets healthy, he's going to be the quarterback at Nebraska. I don't think there's a question about that. He has 29 wins in his career. He's brought Nebraska back from some, some deficits in the fourth quarter last year four times to big wins. And so, yeah, he's been frustrating at times to Nebraska fans with some of the turnovers that he's committed. But, you know, he has a lot of experience, and he's been in big games. And when we get to November and, and the schedule gets really difficult, I think you're going to see Taylor Martinez, assuming he's healthy, he'll be under center for Nebraska. And what's the latest with his health? Well, you know, day to day, man, I don't know. He's been in that boot for a long time, and, you know, turf toe is one of those weird injuries, and it's it's almost how much pain can you take, and it's hard to ever question a guy when it comes to that because you don't know how bad it is. And the way Taylor Martinez plays, he needs to be able to use his feet and his legs. And if you take that part of the game away because he can't push off, he can't cut, then he's not going to be as effective as we need him to be. And at that point, I think you go with Tommy Armstrong. But if he's healthy enough to go out and play, then I think there's no doubt that Taylor Martinez will be the starter. All right, here comes my best-worded question of the day. Ready? Amir <laughs> Abdullah, go. He's dynamic. He's a little uh, a little uh, energizer bunny or something. You know, he's, he plays with power for, for his size. He can make you miss. You know, I think the offensive line for Nebraska has done a much better job this year. But after the first point of attack, he makes a lot of guys miss. He does a lot of it on his own. He's one of the leaders of this team. He's humble. He goes to work every day and plays hard. He's one of the most popular guys on the team. And, you know, he's had a really good year up to this point. We didn't have to use him a whole lot early in the season. His workload has gotten a little bit heavier in the, in the league the last couple of weeks. But, but I think he has enough in the tank, and he's put on some weight in the offseason that's going to really help him when we get later in the year. And most running backs maybe get a little beat up. I think that extra weight is going to help him. It's surprising to me, Mike, that you know he, he runs well in the open field, as we know, but he's really tough between the tackles. Hmm. He always seems to fall forward. He always seems to get that extra yard or two. And so even though he's not a big back, he's a guy that you feel comfortable with running downhill between the tackles, and you can also run him off the edge as well. And you're right. It's not necessarily a big surprise that he's playing great, but Quincy Inunua is a guy who only had three touchdowns his entire career. He's already got seven this season. How come? Well, I think he's improved about as much as anybody on the Nebraska football team. He's a guy that he loves the position. He wanted to get better. He became a better route runner. He's always been a physical specimen. He's a big, strong, wide receiver. He's a great blocker out there. He's a team guy. Uh, he's a guy, again, that's very popular on this football team. And, you know, he, he goes to work every day and, and wants it. He wants to get better. He got better at catching the ball. Now, he did drop a couple on Saturday against Purdue. But he's typically very sure-handed. He, he became a better route runner. And I think they put him in a position to make more plays this year. You know, everybody knew Kenny Bell was, was somewhat the go-to guy. And along with Jamal Turner, a pretty, pretty good wide receiver core for Nebraska to, to throw to. And yet Quincy, with that big body, you're able to throw it up and let him make a play. Uh, pretty sure-handed guy. And he's, he's tough to bring down after the catch. So, you know, he's become a, a really dynamic player for Nebraska. And I think it's going to continue the rest of the season. 
You know, it was a month ago that the UCLA loss happened and then former players started coming out and saying they were unhappy with the coach and Bopolini had the worst week possible. Uh, what's the buzz around town these days about him and about the program right now? Well, it's amazing what a few wins will do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know that Nebraska fans at this point in the season are really shocked by where we stand. I think everybody assumed Nebraska would be six and zero or five and one. We did have that one loss to UCLA, and so we're five and one instead of six and zero. It was a couple bad quarters of football. We really dominated that first half against UCLA, and then things kind of fell apart in the second half. But as we've seen, UCLA is a pretty good football team. Yeah. So you know, I don't think people are shocked about where we are right now. I think the thing with the audio tape is pretty much blown over in my mind. I'm sure there's some people that still remember it. But you don't really hear about it much around Lincoln anymore. And, and I think the more Nebraska wins, the more people will continue to forget about the audio tape. And hopefully, you know, you have an off week here, and then you go to Minnesota, and then you really get into the teeth of the schedule over the next month or five weeks. And, and you know, it's amazing how you know, the reaction of the fans has a lot to do with the success of the team on, on the field. And so I don't think the audio tape really plays into anything right now. I, I think people are pretty positive about this group. Nebraska's had some big injuries this year, and and without Taylor Martinez for a few weeks, sitting here at five and one, have a real chance in a league that, you know, it looks like Nebraska could win every game on the schedule, and they could probably also lose four more. So, so you know, there's a lot to be play to, to play for right now, a lot out there for this team, and and people are, I think, right now, pretty excited about it. Nobody knows the Nebraska program quite like Matt Davidson. Matt, thanks for the time, as always. Mike, thanks, pal.